Recently, there was a lot of fuss on social media, and it's still ongoing. Supporters of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, known as Obedience, have taken to social media to really insult in some very, very colorful language, Professor Wally Shoinka. And it was ignited when uh, Professor Shoinka uh, gave some, let's say, constructive criticism of Mr. Peter Obi, telling him that he had told him twice in the past that he was likely to lose the election because of the uh, comportment of his followers who are known as obedient, how they can be very repugnant in their response to criticism and how they can be very repulsive, you know, insulting people and being very, very boorish in their behavior. Now, apparently that criticism did not go down very well with obedience and a lot of them took to social media and then they've been, you know, it's just terrible how they've been insulting Professor Wale Shoinka, attacking him. Now, uh, an elderly celebrity came out and said that all the respect that he had previously for Walisha Inka were misplaced and that Walisha Inka is not the man that he thought he was and certainly he's not the man that Chino Achebe, he, he was rather, Chino Achebe is a, rather, was a noted Nigerian novelist from the southeast of Nigeria and he was loved everywhere, loved all over Nigeria, loved all over the world. Now, he is trying to make some comparisons and I see that obedience are taking these comparisons, you know, they are kind of promoting them. But the problem is that they are comparing oranges to apples. Now, first of all, you know, in their lifetimes, Professor Walisha Inka and Chinua Achebe, they collaborated, they cooperated together. They were not uh, rivals, so to say. They worked together. If you look at the screen, you're going to see a photograph taken at Dodan Barracks. Dodan Barracks was the military seat of power in the 80s in Nigeria. And they went together to see the then president, General Ibrahim Babanga, to appeal to him for the release of Major General Maman Vatsa, who was also a playwright and a novelist. So you can see that they worked together. But here's the thing, those saying that uh, Chino Achebe deserved the Nobel Prize more than Professor Wally Shoinka should understand that Professor Wally Shoinka did not win the Nobel Prize for being a novelist. Yes, he was a novelist, but he was also a playwright. Now, a playwright is somebody who writes plays. So, for example, William Shakespeare was a playwright, and he's been remembered here for several centuries for his plays. The same thing with Wally Shoinka. Wally Shoinka is a playwright, and he won his Nobel Prize for being a playwright. He didn't win it for being a novelist. So if you go and check the citation for his Nobel Prize, he won it for being a playwright. So he's not comparing with uh, Chinua Achebe. Chinua Achebe is a novelist or that was a novelist. Now, Wale Shoinka is a novelist, but more so he is a playwright. His focus has been plays, not really novels. Now, in terms of novels, I, I don't think anybody will doubt that Chinua Achebe was a better novelist than Professor Walisha Inka is. And I don't think even Professor Walisha Inka would even doubt that, would even argue that. So let's not compare apples to oranges. So when we begin to say this and we try to diminish the status of Professor Walisha Inka, you know, it's not really very, it's not a very, very profitable thing to do. Uh, Bob Marley sang the song in his redemption song. He said, how long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Now, in this case, it's not they killing our prophets. We are the ones now killing our prophets because if you look at Wale Shoinka, Wale Shoinka, in 1967, he fought for Biafrans. Now, I'm not saying all obedience are Biafrans or whether we're Biafrans, but a large percentage of them are the descendants of people who were Biafrans. And Wale Shoinka fought for them and he was arrested and jailed by the military dictatorship of General Yakubu Gowon. And he was in prison for 22 months. Most of those months he was in prison for, you know, in solitary confinement. And it was there that he wrote some of his books, some of the books that even helped him, you know, in his literary career. The Man Died was written while he was in prison. So if you consider that he did that for Nigeria and for Biafrans, and then for you to come around and start to insult him now, you know, it's really... It, it doesn't sit well, you know, especially with a lot of people who know what this man had done. And also, in the military era, you know, he was a leading voice in the National Democratic Coalition, NADECO, fought for democracy to come back to Nigeria. And this man also is the first Black African Nobel laureate for an academic category. Now, I didn't say he's the first Black African Nobel laureate. He's the first Black African Nobel laureate for an academic category. Prior to him, others had won the Nobel Peace Prize. So you talk about Albert Luthuli, probably Bishop Desmond Tutu. He is the first to have won it for an academic category. So let us respect the man 
And then, even if he's criticized the obedient movement, really, it was constructive criticism because he said he did support Peter Obi, gave him some support. And, you know, probably you should appreciate that rather than start to insult the man. I hope that I've been able to put this in context. Thank you for watching and may God bless you. But when no travels all around the world, I hope you get inspired about what you see. I'm full of greatness, Reno is a master. Only one man against the whole world in large, fighting with the monsters. Poverty, I can't stand. That's why Reno is a